Amen. Yes. Truth be told, when we talk about blood sacrifice, you know, in the Old Testament, when a person sinned, do you know how many animals were killed because people sinned against God? And it wasn't the mere fact of the blood that was, that was cut and the blood that was coming off and the animal being killed. It was the mere fact that we were supposed to be the animals that were being sacrificed on the altar. That was the reward we deserved. The wages of sin is what? Death. Nowhere around that. So the animal took our place and died upon the altar for our sakes because we should have died. Believe me, if the enemy had his way, not one of us would be here right now. He don't care how old you are. So Jesus, not only did he overcome and came down and took away the power from Satan and death in the grave and took it back up with him, all in his hand, he also equipped us with gifts. Amen. Amen. Powerful gifts in the spirit. They were able to do things that ordinary people would not be able to do if they didn't know. He says, but this gift, these gifts are in the body. They're made for the body and the perfecting of the body. Amen. And let's name just, there's just a few of the gifts he names. Amen. What was the first one he named? Do you remember? Apostle. Okay. Prophet. Who else? Evangelist. Who else? Pastor. And who else? Teachers. Now he's trying to he's trying to let you know something that's going on. We're talking about the government of God. Amen. There is an order that he flows in. Amen. And there's a reason why even. I tell you, one of the things I love about this church, I love about the Spirit of Prophecy Church, what I love about it, is Apostle Stan is walking in his call, amen? amen. As, as an apostle, he opens and moves and pushes the vision of God in different places. And you witness that here. Do you know how many churches don't even have that much? They don't even have an apostle even to call on. They got 20 pastors. They got 15 bishops, but they don't have an apostle. Amen? Some say, well, yeah, the apostolic is over with. You know, when the 12 died, that was it. It's all gone. Why would he even say that then if, if Jesus gave the gift? Jesus gave a gift and took it away and not give you no more? He gave you the gift to keep it for a reason, for the perfecting of the body. Read that part again when you start as apostles. Read it again. And he gave some apostles. Some apostles, amen. And some prophets. Some prophets. And some evangelists. Some evangelists. Some pastors. Some pastors. And teachers. Some teachers, amen. Keep going. For the perfecting of the saints. Mm -hmm. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Stop. Some of y'all got an aha moment right there, didn't you? Some of you caught what, just, what he just said, didn't you? So if he's coming back for a perfected bride, coming back for a perfected body, that's going to meet him in the air. How are we going to get there? Yeah. If we got all this mess going on, if we got all this stuff that can't enter in, remember, be ye holy, right? Yeah. How in the world are we going to get there? Die. Amen. Everybody say the gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because you have an apostle stand before you, a pastor stand before you, a teacher stand before you, say, get it right. Straighten up. Amen. Turn it around. Some of y'all say, oh, I can't hang around here, but they're always talking holy in the Let me get out of here. <laughs> but you don't understand the chastening of the Lord is because he loves you. Amen. And you need to be chastened because you need to be at another level. Yes. Amen. You've been at this level so long now that you got complacent and comfortable. I always know when a person's complacent. I wonder why they do this in church. <laughs> Everybody saw me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Always know they're complacent because they can't control their flesh. Their flesh has not been tempered. Their mouth says what it wants to say. Their body does what it wants to do. And therefore, when the Lord charges and challenges them, they what? Run away. Amen? And that's what a true man and woman of God does. They challenge your faith so that you may grow and increase in the knowledge of God. Amen? How many of y'all been increased in knowledge this morning already? Praise God. I'm going to come right to the other ones. Keep their hand down. I ain't got nothing yet. Glory to God. Keep going. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Oh, really? Keep going. Yes. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Whoa! That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about in every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness 
whereby we whereby they lie and wait to de to deceive. Yeah, even devour. Amen. But Keep speaking going. the truth in love may grow up into him all things, which is the head, even Christ. Stop right there. So it's important to understand because this process, everybody's going through a process right now of knowing him and becoming more like him. Now your flesh says, I don't want to go through this process. I want to stay in bed. Your flesh says, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like lifting up my hands and worshiping him. But your spirit man says, you're here for a reason. I brought you here for a reason. Get involved. Amen. Become activated. Don't let the Lord come in and walk out and you don't even know he's there. All right. He's perfecting us for a reason. And a part of that through the gifts is when the man and woman of God challenges and charges you to get up off your butt and worship him. All right. Amen. Now, should we have to do that? We shouldn't have to do that as a man. We shouldn't have to. Matter of fact, to have a praise and worship leader in front of you is actually an insult. Why? Because you should already be praising and worshiping anyway. When you praise and worship the Lord, it should add to what they're already doing. And not them prompting you to come on, clap, y'all, smile, say something, hallelujah. And like, I'd be glad when they finish singing, glory to God again. You're missing it. You hear me? You're missing it. Amen. Keep going. I'm sorry. Keep going. I get caught up sometimes. Pray for me. <laughs> um, speak the truth. Okay, speak. Do you want me to read that one again? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. It's fine. You read it. All. Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head of, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. Stop. So I want you to understand that I have need of you. I want you to do this clear. Everybody say this. Say, I need you. I need, I need you. you. Even though you may not know me, the word of God says, know those who labor among you. You need to get to know me. Why? Because we need each other. You know what a blessing it is to be able to call on Proverbs Leslie when I need an intercessor to pray for me to help me in a situation? And she can pray with me on the spot on the phone. I'm like, Lord of God, I'm ready to fight. Let's go. I got what I need to fight. Look at the person to the left and right of you. Oh, good boy. Oh, he looked to the left and right of you. Has it gotten that bad? <laughs> now, remember, now, now, hear what I'm saying. We in the church right here. Now, you understand? We're in the church. We ain't even out there. So I can imagine that, you know, the coldness is five times stronger out there than it is in here. The reason why I say that is because how well do you know those in this room right now? Do you know the gifts that they possess right now that are beside you? Do you know what they can do in the Lord? Do you have an idea? Oh, are you so into your own world? Going back home to your own place, going to Spring Creek to go get some barbecue. <laughs> to go watch the NBA playoffs. <laughs> that you have no clue what the Lord is doing right in front of your own eyes. I've realized as a man of God that the Lord does so many things in front of you that if you just stop and take notice, it'll change your life. We're so busy. Sometimes we have this, this, this thing about us, and just hold on, we're, we're going back here, we're going back here. We have this thing about us where our pride is so strong because we believe we're better than others. We think that because we know so many things, that we've experienced so many things, nobody knows who we are. They don't know what we've been through. So we don't open ourselves up to anybody else because we think we've already Very dangerous position to be in. In the beginning of Ephesians 4, he talked about being humble, low, and meek. Why? Because you can't receive nothing from the Lord if you've already got everything. That's right. If you're already perfect, then you don't need Jesus. Hey, man, anybody already got that level yet? No. When y'all raise your hand, I'm going to throw my shoe at you. you <laughs> <laughs> because we have to understand we need one another. Amen. I'm telling you, this morning, this Sunday morning, those who are in this room right now were already spoken on before it even happened. Amen. By destiny, you were supposed to be here for a reason. Amen. Now, with that said, and now that you understand that the Lord has a divine purpose in your life, what you do from that point, because it is by choice, you can take advantage of the situation, or you can let it pass you by. Just like when she got up here and she started worshiping and started singing, there was an opportunity for you to step into a whole other level of worship. But if you kept to yourself and held yourself and said, hmm, I wonder if I can get another donut in there. You missed it. Amen? 
This was so intense to the children of Israel. This is so important to them. When they followed the cloud of smoke during the day or the pillar of fire by night, they were trying to see where it would go and where it would stop so they could build a tabernacle again. Right. They were so sensitive to what the Lord was doing and where he wasn't. They didn't want to miss him. And when he rested upon a place, they put up the tabernacle and they waited for the altar, the brazen altar to light so they'll know that it's the place they need to be. When the holy fire lit the altar, they knew it was good to go. But they stood in awe just waiting. Imagine the intensity of what they're talking about. They're in the desert. Do you hear me? You know, other, you know, lions, tigers, and bears, oh my? Their main focus is, Lord, where are we going? What we got to do? Where today our focus is, I want to make sure that my car is washed real good and I get ready for work tomorrow. Those, those, what I'm trying to share with you is, don't miss God coming to you. Amen. Don't miss the opportunity to worship him. Amen. Don't miss the opportunity to get in your position so that you may be in place to fit jointly together Amen. as the body of Christ. And I will do something that may take you out your comfort zone. Oh, Lord, help him. Please, Jesus, help him. Take your arm and wrap it around the other arm of the person you're sitting beside. Now, some of you guys, it'll be easy because you came to church with that person. Some of y'all didn't come to church with that person. You're like, oh, man. Grab his arm. You crazy? We working it out back there? We okay? We got it? Tank, you hold it down back there, Tank? You got it, baby? That's my younger boy holding it down like that. He got it. I got it, Dad. I got a leg, too. I got it. <laughs> now, this is important because if you're part of the body of Christ, where one moves, now just come my way, as he moves, it should have a what? So, yeah, I'm going to pull this way. Everybody lean this way. See, some of y'all ain't leaning. See, y'all ain't joining. You ain't fitted yet. See? See? Let's go back the other way. You see that? You're fitly joined together. Give yourself a hand clap right there. Now listen. That was a small, <laughs> a small portion of how intense the Lord wants us to be. Understand we're dealing with Satan. You understand the importance of who Satan is, right? Maybe you don't. Somebody real quick, Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. Real quick, Revelation 12, 11. My Bible scholar. Where's everybody else's Bible at? Revelation 12, 11. We all electronically, you got in your brain or something? <laughs> Get your Bible. Won't you come in there with no Bible no more? Glory to God. See, I, I take my belt off. Glory to God. Revelation 12. Wait a second, because they ain't got it yet. They all still look for Bibles. You got it? All right, you're going to get you a book. Now, the electric phone the thing. Look, I have this thing here, but do you know how many times it has let me down? <laughs> Nothing's worse than you sit up there in front of a whole group of people and it goes, Phew! <laughs> Can I borrow somebody's Bible? No! Where's your Bible? Amen? Get you a Bible. Amen? Get you a Bible that can't go out because the batteries are dead. Amen? Well, it's inconvenient. It doesn't look nice. It doesn't, doesn't match my, my suit and my dress and everything. Get over that. Amen? This too shall pass. Praise God. <laughs> Revelation 12, 11. Let's go. And they Who's him? Who's him? Who overcame? They overcame him. Who's him? <laughs> Satan and his demonic forces. Amen? By what? The blood, of the blood of the Lamb. Now, now, we say the blood of the lamb, right? Some people say, well, I don't want no blood on me. I think it's nasty, the blood. We're talking about the blood, shed blood of Jesus Christ, amen? amen. How do you think you're going to enter into heaven? You think you're going to get in on your works? Pastor Joe, I did a lot, man. You all knew I healed so many people and you know, cast out demons. Matter of fact, I raised somebody from the dead. He will let me in just for that. And he's going to look at you and say, I know you not. Depart from me, that wicked servant. Get away from me. Because he does not see his son on you. Amen. The blood of the lamb. Keep going. Under the word of their testimony. And by the word of their testimony. Very important because your testimony belongs to you. Nobody can take that away from you. Amen. I don't care who it is. Not even the President of the United States can take your testimony away. Keep going. And they love not their lives unto the dead. And they love not their lives unto the dead. <gasps> Ooh. Now that's a tough one. Because when they talk about whose God you serve. Because a lot of people are serving Baal. When they see you, they're like, who God you serve? I serve Jesus. Jesus! I need y'all to bring this stuff. We're going to chop his head off right now. Bring the gear. We're going to chop his head off. Wait a minute. No, no. I was just playing. I don't serve Jesus. I was just playing. Because when your life is put to the test of who you serve, it's going to separate the men from the boys. Amen? Yeah, that's right. Do you serve a true living God? Do you really believe what you preach? Yes. Now, I'm telling you, I already know a lot of you have been put in a situation before where you're sitting down somewhere, you may be at a gas station, or maybe at a bus stop, or maybe at a food a restaurant or something, 
and your faith gets challenged by somebody. They walk through and they do something that is not conducive to the spirit of God. Matter of fact, it vexes your spirit. You sit still and say, well, I ain't going to say nothing. Hopefully they go away. You let it pass you by and you do nothing, no action whatsoever when there was an opportunity for you to witness for the love of Jesus Christ. How many times has that happened to somebody in here? It's happened to me several times. Anybody else has happened to? Anybody? Everybody else, y'all, when it happened, glory to God, Jesus with me, get out there, don't do it. You shout it, let them know who you were. Y'all know y'all not having to stop the praise of y'all. y'all right now. I want you to take it up past 12. Let's start here at verse, let's start here at uh, 12, uh, 10. 12, 10. Uh -huh. Oh, no, start at verse 9, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, mm -hmm. that false serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out. So he wasn't by himself. No, no. Matter of fact, he took a third of them with him, right? Yeah. How, many, how much is a third? Do y'all know how much a third was? 33.333. 33.333. Right. Yeah. Only, only engineers catch that. <laughs> a third of the angels, because there was an innumerable amount of angels that were up in heaven. There were so many angels. You know how many demons, or I should say how many angels fell with Satan? How many he took down with him? So great a number that it says that an assignment may be put on you of 6,000 or more angels that come against you at every time, and every place, on every side. Wow. So imagine this room right here. Each one of you having 6,000 angels coming against you. Wow. That's a lot of angels, amen? That's a lot yeah. of fallen spirits, amen? Yeah. Yeah. Now watch this. But greater is he than you. you. I'm going to appreciate it, amen? Yeah. So he says, he says, he says, Gehazi. Now I'm talking, I'm talking about Elijah talking about. Is that right? Elijah talk? Yeah, has he? Let me pray for your eyes so that you may see the innumerable amount of angels that are surrounding us and protecting us right now. Remember, one third fail, right? What's left? Two thirds. Satan has great wrath because he knows his time is up. Yep. And not only does he have great wrath, he has very great passion because his time is short. So you're dealing with a person who's motivated, who's passionate about what they do. Right. You can't come against them lackadaisical, lollygagging, thinking that you're going to be able to defeat them. Yeah. I'm trying to help you out here. We need to be in a position of attack and not always trying to figure out what's going on and getting hit from other sides. That's right. That's right. Do I have any attackers in here? Yeah. Do I have anybody that likes to hunt? Yeah. Anybody like to go out there and hunt for their food, go get their kids? Or do you want to go to the grocery store and swipe their car? <laughs> You're killing the grill, right? There's a reason why, because you are designed to subdue those things around you on earth. Amen. You're called as men and women of God to subdue the things of the enemy. Amen. Not to sit back and let them hit you. Amen. 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 Go ahead and finish that up. I'm trying, I'm trying to get here because the Lord is, is, is tugging on me to a certain place here. From whom the whole body fitly joined together, fitly joined together. and compacted by that which every joint supplier. According to the effectual working and the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. So increasing in love, when we start to compact, fit jointly together. Let me if I move this real quick. Is it okay? I'm going to show you what I mean. Come get real close to her. I mean so close that you almost in her chair. Just squeeze real tight. I don't care. Just squeeze it real close. Yeah. She can't even breathe. Glory to God. Jointly fitted together. Compacted. And as we do this, do you think that we get to know who this person is right here? Yes. Do you think we get to love on her a little bit more? Yes. Do we know what's going on with her? Yes. Therefore, we know those who labor among us. Amen? Amen. We're jointly fitted together. And when you do that, your love in Christ increases. Amen. Why? Because now I got to know you. I got to know all your stuff. Good, bad, and ugly. Amen? And believe me, a lot of us have some ugly stuff we want to talk about. Amen? But we need to make it aware to others so that we may empower each other. Yes. I'm trying to wake you up. There's something in here that I want you to catch because the Holy Spirit, he's moving very strongly in here that you realize the person you're sitting beside ain't just a person that's just taking up a chair. They're designed to fit with you for a reason. Because when you see a demon manifest and he starts to act up and cut out, and he starts to do things and throw things around, you're going to call on others to help you in that situation. And they're going to be there to fight with you. Amen. Amen. How many people can we call on if a demon manifests right now? 
Anybody here we can call on? Who can we call on to manifest a demon? Manifest? How many of y'all going? What well, I'm saying, some people going to do this. Demon in the name of Jesus, shut up. Other people going to be like, oh, Lord, they're going crazy in this church. We out here. Get the babies, get the kids. We're gone. You catch me? Yes. That's where the rubber meets the road, amen? Come on, we're almost done. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Stop. Did you hear that? They didn't catch it. They didn't catch it, Lord Jesus. Read that part again. Read it again. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Stop. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. Do you understand what he's saying there? Because there's so many Gentiles, amen, mm -hmm. that are letting the world pass them by. They don't know what the Lord is doing. They don't even know where to go and worship him. They don't have a clue about worshiping. They don't even know that there's healing in the Lord. They don't even know that there's deliverance in the Lord. Joy in the Lord. Amen? And it just passed them through their ignorance because they live, they're living their own life through their ignorant ways. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But there is a way that seemeth right unto man. Yes. But the end thereof is what? Yes. Destruction. Yes. Now I'm coming to right where you are because I want you to be challenged in your faith and in your knowledge in Christ so that you'll be able to get up from where you are and go to another level. Amen. So as I minister these next words to you here, if it hits your spirit, I want you to stand up. Amen? Amen. Only if it hits your spirit. Now, some of y'all don't know what spirit is. You have no clue. So you don't know if it hits you or not. It just, you just roll on by. <laughs> but I want to see if the Lord is speaking to you this morning. Amen. To some of you that are sitting down right now. Because I'm looking in your eyes, through your gate, through your spirit. And I see it shaking up and stirring some things up. Matter of fact, some of you have so much dirt and so much hard ground above the heart. That that foul ground must be broken up yeah. and penetrated yeah. so that you be able to love again. Keep going, almost done. Keep going. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness mm -hmm. to work all uncleanness with greediness. Mm -hmm. But you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Come on. That you put off concerning the former conversation. The old man, the old man, which yeah. is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Stop. You're done. Have a seat. Thank you. Give her a hand clap. Yeah. This old man is what we're constantly dealing with. Ooh, this old man. Lord Jesus, help me with this old man. God, this old man, my Lord Jesus. Everybody say old man. Old man. man. We talk about the old man. What does that sound like to you, old man? What does it sound like to you, old man? What does it sound like? Huh? Cranky. Cranky? Yeah, you better say it. Somebody Stuck in his ways. Yeah. <laughs> you think about the old man, somebody that will not change their ways. They're stubborn. They will not change their mindset. They're stuck in a rut and can't get out of it. They're like the old dog sitting on the rusty nail just hollering and not making a change. Yeah. Sit on the porch. Oh, 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 oh. And the guy says, what is wrong with that dog? Oh, he's just sitting on the rusty nail. <laughs> well, won't he get up? Because it don't hurt him bad enough. When it hurts him bad enough, he'll what? Get up. Hopefully get up. Well, I'm telling some of y'all today. You be, oh, 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 my bills. Oh, I can't take it. Oh, the church don't do this. And they don't do that. This was come Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and you're sitting on the rusty nail and not getting your butt up off of it That's right. and doing something yourself. Amen. 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 Everybody show me now. I'm looking. I think, I think we're all good in here. Let me make sure. Can everybody speak in here? Yes. Everybody, everybody say hi. 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 Y'all can speak, so I don't know if y'all can talk or not. Say hi. Hi. Okay. Can they really well? <laughs> Can you see? Yeah, everybody got eyes to see it. Yes. Can you see? Yes. Okay. It don't look like nobody's just stone cold crazy in here and falling over and can't control their bodily functions. What's the problem? Yep. What's going on? We have what we need to connect to a risen Savior. Amen. To be empowered. To push back the things of the enemy. Mm -hmm. But not only that, to take somebody along with us. 
and lift up the body of Christ. Amen. 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 It's here right now. Yes. 